I like swords, and what you see here is only the beginning of my power! Shadowverse. Yes, I, I like katanas, okay? It's just that I don't like them getting overinflated in terms of their prominence and also the context and understanding of what they were used for, what they are good at. And I'd be just as critical as any other sword that gets misrepresented. So what specifically am I talking about in this video regarding a misunderstanding of the katana? It's size and by its size then also its use and period. People think the katana is the stereotypical sword of the samurai. Depends on the period. If you actually think of the stereotypical sword of the samurai that were contemporary with say the medieval period, it's not the katana. The samurai as a kind of warrior class continued on after what we would stereotypically think of the medieval period and although there is an interesting uh, uh, many interesting events in Japanese history specifically in the Edo period as to the legality of holding wearing swords and the samurai class the samurai class continued into well into the 16th 17th an 18th century. The story of the samurais in those period and the sword or the more stereotypical sword that they used is actually the katana. But if you want to look at the samurai, the ones that would wear armor and go into battle and are more contemporary with a medieval knight, it's not the katana. It's actually a sword that is uh, far more fair to consider in comparison to the medieval swords that were also used in similar contexts. I am of course talking about the tashi or Tachi. If you're a sword enthusiast, you've probably heard of the Tachi quite regularly and you know about it, but for a lot of people who are introduced to the katana in pop culture, the katana is it. It's the katana is the sword of the samurai. But no, if you want to think of the samurai as uh, a warrior that engaged in serious warfare, the sword that should be identified most commonly with the samurai in this regard is the Tachi. What is the Tachi? Well, I have a sword here that is representative of the size of the Tachi, but it is not perfectly representative of a tashi for a couple of reasons that I'm going to explain. This here is more accurately called an O katana. The O simply means big. O katana, big katana. And as you can see, bigger. In regards to a comparison between a tashi and katana, this is about the sim same roundabout size difference that you will find. The thing about historical tashis is that they actually had a more pronounced curve, not crazy curve like we see in the scimitar range of swords, but more than your standard katana. And also interestingly, you find many examples in which the handle was offset from the line of the sword a bit more. And so on a lot of tashis, a bit more pronounced curve and the handle usually coming off from a slightly steeper angle. They also usually had different fittings and finishes. And so this, the reason why it is considered an O katana, it has all the finishes that a standard katana has. You see a, a very traditional, you know, diamond-like wrap, very traditional scabbard. This type of sword is made to be put in your sash, blade facing up, where a lot of traditional tashis, basically all of them, had fittings where they hung blade down from the belt like so. It's interesting when you, you hear, ah, it was always blade down and blade up and things like that. I don't like when people take those um, uh, co kind of common understandings of things and uh, then apply them universally. Of course, I'm sure there was some samurai somewhere who had a tashi and was like, no, I'm gonna have a, I, I like it this way, blade up. And same with the katana, maybe someone just wanted to blade down. So don't think, ah, if it's not got the correct fittings, everything is hanging in a different way. I, every tashi must be hanging blade down. But more commonly, th this was a, a more common standard, just not universal. That's the difference between say an O katana and a tachi, okay? Mainly curve, angle of the handle, finishes, and the more common way that it's hung. Hence why this is an O katana and not a tashi. But what's interesting, do you know there is a bigger version of the tashi? Because even in the period where the katana was more favored as the type of sword that, you know, the samurai wore, some people just like bigger ones and they would still wear them in, in civilian context, but also in combative com context. And so that's why the O katana came about. And so the O katana was a sword that was used in that later period because sometimes people just like bigger length swords, which interestingly, in the period where the Tachi was most prominent, and you can find a sword called the Otachi, more commonly pronounced as the Odachi. And the Odachi is a really big 
type of Japanese sword. Bigger than your standard Tashi length would be. Tashi is bigger than Katana. This is the standard size, but then you have Otashi or Odachi. And then you have Katana, and then you have the bigger version of the Katana, which is the Okatana. Very interesting stuff. Now, what I find interesting about this is when we start to compare it then to uh, the more uh, contemporary European equivalents, because the katana is often compared to the longsword, but there are some very distinct kind of differences that make it a more unfair comparison. Longsword, as probably identified by its name, is long and reach has such a profound benefit in combat. There's a more recent video that's become quite popular in comparing the longsword to the katana. Overall, he does a pretty good job, but he does make some broad statements that the katana is universally a better thrusting sword. That very much depends on the type of longsword. This longsword I'm holding right here and the full review was actually sent to me by Cult of Athena, one of the best places online you can get any sword. I have another katana here Cult of Athena sent me, genuinely best place online and even internationally. Like it's easier to get swords from Cult of Athena sent to me in Australia than it is to buy swords from retailers within Australia. This longsword right here is uh, an oak shop type 18C, I, I think, but also known as an Alexandrian style longsword. And one of the things that they're known for is being beastly cutters. So I'm really looking forward to trying this thing out. But uh, look at the drastic difference in blade profile we have here. And so you can get vastly different performances out of longswords by the wide variance that does exist in their designs. There's far more variance in your standard kind of long swords than you generally find with many Japanese style swords. There is of course an elephant in the room, or you could say sword on the rack, that has been standing out and probably demands to be mentioned, which could be considered an even more fair comparison to the katana in terms of European sword versus Japanese swords, and that is the Kriegsmesser. And oh yes, the Kriegsmesser is a very interesting comparison to the katana. There are some close similarities, but you shouldn't consider it the European version of the katana, nor should you really consider the katana the, the Japanese version of the Mesa. A bit of convergent evolution, but there's still some significant differences that would make the comparison very interesting. So interesting I think it deserves its own dedicated video to really dive into the pros and cons because there's some hidden things in terms of just the geometry of these blades which do impact how they cut and the benefits, pros and cons between the two. Dedicated video coming up. One of the reasons why I think the katana is so often compared to the longsword is the samurai knight kind of comparison and then they think to what is the most common sword that either the samurai or the, the knight used. They kind of get the periods wrong because they think of the later samurai and then they associate the katana and that's where the comparison begins with. But also I think it's uh, partly handle length as well. This is a very much dedicated two-handed weapon. You can use it in one hand, don't get me wrong. It's more unwieldy. Well, it's actually about equally unwieldy as, say, this longsword in one hand. These are both dedicated two-handed swords. If we were to compare blade length, it's a much more fair comparison to compare a katana to a bastard sword, which stereotypically have shorter blades. The thing is, though, this bastard sword is made to more easily be used in one hand because of its weight distribution, even though by weight, it's actually probably a bit heavier than this katana. This is like 1.7 kilos, right? It's actually quite heavy for a one-handed sword, but look at the size of this pummel. This one is made to be able to be both used in one hand or two hands. In actual fact, let's get a second opinion here. How are you, Nate? I'm good. Apparently we're looking at swords, which is always- It's just, always fun. It's great. It is. It's like a bat phone. I'm here. You are actually a very experienced reenactor. Yes. And you've done lots of different sword play, you know, and stuff. Hema? Like... A little bit of Hema, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of LARP, mostly reenactment, which mm -hmm. is quite chaotic, but you get to play with so many I know, swords. and you'd be used to actually some pretty heavy gear swords yes. as a reenactor. So I'm interested because this sword, I was surprised when I held this one for the first time. So have a, have a feel of the weight of that one. What did you say this was? 1.7? 1.7 kilos. I mean, it's definitely fightable. Yeah, that, well that's <laughs> the thing. I was shocked by how balanced that sword was for being yeah. so heavy. The weight definitely feels around yeah. here. That's good. And so the point that I'm making here is that this one, even though heavier than your standard katana, right, it's actually been balanced and made to be mm. able to be used with one hand. And so that's the purpose behind it, where the katana hasn't. Uh, you, you would have experienced katana. The weight I is do, just- And I automatically feel like I need you'd to. You need, yeah, because it's so top heavy. And the katana's made for that. This isn't a negative. It's made to be a more cleaving kind of sword. Therefore, more top heavy is beneficial in the cut. But that's why it's a bit more unreasonable to compare the katana to a bastard sword, because we're dealing with actually very different beasts in terms of their function. The bastard sword is made 
more stereotypically, to be functional in one hand mm -hmm. and two hands, where the katana is dedicated to handed sword, so people just more naturally compare it to the long sword than the bastard sword. So in reality, the Japanese sword, which is a much fairer comparison to the medieval long sword, and also far more contemporary to the medieval long sword, is the Tashi. But the comparisons are a lot more equivalent. Like, look at the length here. We, we are dealing with the nearly the same length sword here, both dedicated to handed swords, both used by armored warriors in warfare. Also, don't think that <laughs> the long sword or the tashi were the primary weapons of either the knight or the samurai on a battlefield. Samurai? They loved their, well, they loved their, their bows, their archery, as well as firearms, but so did the knights, right? Knights did use archery, did use firearms, before the samurai even, and uh, pole arms. Again, these swords, they were used on battlefields. They are generally still more kind of either backup weapons or, or, or you know, it, it depends. There's a different context in which you would prefer them. But these are the swords that are much better to compare, the Tachi versus the long sword. And what you'll find is that they're probably equally as good as each other in the given context that they're used for. The thing is though, this is my own personal bias, freely admit, one, something that really gives me the, I guess, lean towards the, the preference to the long swords is the cross guards. I, I love a cross guard, I've, I've, I've used both. And when I crossed over, because I started with kendo, right? When I crossed over and started using uh, an approximate of a long sword, I was actually shocked at how much this cross guard can block, especially when you start to use it in defense to catch the blade as they come in. But then you have so much variance because you can have long swords that are made and desired to be cutters. Like this is a cutter. The thing is though, when it comes to say this Alexandrian style long sword, the sweet spot is lower on the blade. Even though this will be a beastly cutter, you'll probably find that the Tachi will be able to cut more devastatingly closer to the tip by virtue of its design. But as a result, the Alexandrian long sword will be much better at thrusting and be a beastly thruster still. We're dealing with very small kind of benefits and losses here to the point where each of these swords are going to be very effective in the given context in which they're meant to be used. When I've done my comparisons, a lot of them has been long sword versus katana. And like I said, that's a more unfair comparison because when you have reach added on top of the other advantages, long sword smashes the katana. But when you compare long sword to tachi, much, much closer comparison in my opinion. And as a result, the Tachi, and yes, as well as the O Katana, does not get nearly as much love uh, compared to the Katana. And again, the takeaway, the most prominent sword of the Samurai during the same period in which the Knights were on the battlefield is the Tachi and not the Katana. The Tachi should be considered the most beastly Japanese Samurai sword. Yes, let's give some more love to the Tachi, baby. And there we go. Uh, that's kind of the takeaway that I wanted to share, some points and some considerations. I appreciate you for watching. Hope to see you here on the next video on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell.